there, I'm Pamela Dykehouse, the pastor at First United Methodist Church in Corpus Christi, Texas. So I'm recording this devotional video on a Friday afternoon as I'm getting ready to do an evening funeral. Yeah, an evening funeral. It's, it's out of the ordinary. We tend to hold them in the daytime, and I was thinking about how when we get done with the funeral this evening, it's going to be dark when we walk out of the church building. And as rare as that is for a funeral, you know, it's really quite fitting uh, for the occasion because try as we might to focus on the joy of our loved ones entering the presence of God, um, the time that surrounds their death can, can be dark like night. Um, it can be gloomy and gray and hard to remember even what light looks like. So last Sunday, Pastor Jason started our three-week series on the Old Testament book of Job. The figure of Job is a good man who loses everything. I mean, everything. Home, work, family, health. He loses it all. A dark time for sure. We're going to spend two more Sundays um, with Job and and. It's going to lead us to wonder as we get more familiar with Job, where is God in such situations? And Job has a lot to teach us about that. His story will not answer all of our questions, but we certainly can find solidarity with Job um, for the losses and dark times in our own lives. So I hope that you'll join us um, for worship. Uh, this coming Sunday and the following one was as we finish up the series. And if you missed last Sunday's uh, message, you can go and find that here on our YouTube channel as well. So alongside our Job series, I want to invite you to spend some time with Psalm 121, which is what I'm going to focus on uh, in this message today. I remember first knowing Psalm 121 because of seeing it um, as the, the little brass plaque on a, uh, on a painting in a familiar place in my childhood um, was this painting. It was of mountains and that little plaque said Psalm 121 and that gave me a concept of what that psalm was about and, and drew me to, to reading it. The psalm offers assurance for times when we feel kind of like Job, whether we are literally or figuratively walking out of a funeral into a dim evening. So Psalm 121 begins, I lift up my eyes to the hills from where will my help come? You know, our view can, can get so small, no further than, you know, our smartphone or a television screen. And if we would turn those things off and lift up our eyes to the hills, just lift up our eyes, we can see that there is more to life than, than whatever has brought um, some darkness upon us during some season. So how many of us from this flat coastal region, the coastal bend, love to go to the hill country or out west to the mountains? I think one of the reasons that we love that so is how the landscape lifts up our eyes um, and reminds us where our help comes from. Verse 2 of Psalm 121 makes it plain. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. When we lift up our eyes, we can see evidence all around us of the presence of God, our creator, um, the one who made heaven and earth. Psalm 121 then goes through this litany of the ways that our Creator tends to us. Beginning, I love this, beginning with how God will not fall asleep on us. God won't fall asleep on us. It says, He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. He who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. So I remember in a challenging season during my seminary years, uh, 20 plus years ago, memorizing those two verses and repeating them as kind of a, a breath prayer as I rode my bicycle to campus each day. And from far away, as I approached the Divinity School on the Duke campus, I would focus my eyes on the steeple of Duke Chapel and remember that the one who made me would not slumber nor sleep. So I didn't have any mountains or hills to look up at through all the trees in that region of North Carolina, but I would look at that steeple on the chapel um, to remind me 
that God was not going to slumber or sleep, but always would keep watch over me. The psalm continues, The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. When I hear how the Lord will keep us, and this psalm uses that term a lot, will keep us, it makes me think of a zookeeper. Um, I'm not a big fan of zoos anymore, I have to tell you the truth. I, I appreciate the educational and conservation aspects of them, but the last time I went to a zoo, I felt a little sad for the gorillas in particular. At any rate, the role of a zookeeper is to tend the animals they are responsible for. Throughout my childhood, at different points, I had a role in the care of a menagerie of animals. Um, At times, rabbits, chickens, guinea pigs, white-tailed deer fawns, a javelina piglet, um, a squirrel, a few fish, a couple of dogs and cats. Um, Probably left something out. (laughs) So I guess I've been a zookeeper of sorts. And each of those critters had its unique needs, but all required dedicated and consistent care from their owner master in order for them to to be well, to thrive. We're not animals in a zoo, but that idea helps me to understand Psalm 121 and how it is that God keeps us, what that means there. When you've got a pet, like all of those pets that I've had at some point, you cannot take a break from caring for them. They require constancy. Well, this God who made the mountains and the hills, um, the sight of which reminds us of him, this God watches over, stands beside, protects, keeps us, and never, never takes a break from doing so. Not for a single season, not even for a single day or night. Never. So verse 8 wraps up the psalm saying, The Lord will keep your going out and you're coming in from this time on and forevermore. So as you come and you go through life's times of light and life's times of darkness, the Lord does not relent in keeping watch over you. When we feel like Job, we may not be able to see clearly for a while. We may wonder where God is. When we feel like Job, we may have difficulty seeing beyond what is right in front of us. Sometimes like Job, we have to stay in that dim place for a while. But if we are to have a chance to see, to know that God, how God is keeping us, even when we feel like we are coming and going in the dark, then the starting point is to lift up our eyes. Lift up our eyes like I used that steeple on Duke Chapel to lift up my eyes. Lift up our eyes to the hills, to the mountains. Lift up our eyes to the sky, to the heavens. Lift up our eyes to the eyes of a friend who is trying to get through to us. Lift up our eyes to the truth of the scripture. Lift up our eyes to God, our creator. So back to Job. In the throes of his torment, When Job's friends kept coming to him and honestly doing more to hurt than to help in many of their words, still Job looked up and knew the truth of God's presence. As he declared in Job 19 verse 25, But as for me, I know that my Redeemer lives. If you are in a time of darkness, if you're in a time of darkness right now, may you know that your Redeemer lives, that your Creator never slumbers. Spend some time with Psalm 121 and make it your own. Claim it for yourself. Know that the Lord your God keeps your coming and your going from this time on and forevermore. Amen. 